Hey guys, it's Mike with Become the Night. Welcome back to another Song Suggestion Friday. I'm joined again by Ben and Ryan. I think this is, might be a regular thing. I've seen your guys' suggestion to make a playlist, and I am now compiling all the songs for Song Suggestion Friday in a YouTube playlist. The link to that will be in the description below. As a way of saying thank you to those who contributed to me on Patreon, I sent out a survey to all of you to tell me what songs you wanted us to listen to for Song Suggestion Friday, and we are doing those today. If you want to be able to vote for what songs we do in Song Suggestion Friday, please go pledge $5 a month on Patreon. Pledge more if you want. There's all kinds of cool perks like artist development. You'll get access to all the MP3s for all the random jams. I'm going to be doing a monthly live stream for all of the patrons. So yeah, go check it out. Let's get started. The Decline by No Effects. I was actually kind of impressed with this. I was very surprised. I was not expecting an 18 minute punk song. <laughs> an 18 minute punk venture, no less. <laughs> it was kind of like, if there was a such thing as progressive punk, I just listened to it. It's well executed for what they did and I appreciate that. Uh, still not really a huge fan of punk and it was just too political for my tastes. To preface this, I was in a very bad mood the first time I listened to like all these songs. I listened to them more than once. Uh, the first time I heard this song, um, I was thinking, no effects, okay, cool, like they're punky and emotional and it'll be good for today. And then it was 18 minutes, uh, so that was a little much for me. Um, I've, I've never really been the biggest no effects fan, even though I do love a good punk song. I don't know if it's just his vocals or what it is about the band necessarily, but anyways, I feel like the song would have been better executed with six individual tracks, because there were certain parts I would have liked to like go to. There was like that tremolo part that he had in there that was really cool, actually. Um, like kind of like an interlude between, uh, I don't know, stanzas, I suppose what you call them. But uh, it was cool. It's kind of like if, if Taylor Swift did a you know an 18 minute song. Like there's not much to punk to make it progressive. You know, interesting for 18 minutes. So I appreciate it that they like did it. You know, because nobody else really. I mean, I'm sure somebody else has tried, but. Um, they, I appreciate they succeeded. Yeah, they, they succeeded. succeeded. They succeeded. Uh, it was it was a good. It was like six good punk songs <laughs> that I probably wouldn't listen to again. But it was overall, it was you know, it was good for what they did. It was well executed for the idea. I never listened to No Effects before, uh, literally ever. But I was surprised. Just what I expected was not what came out of the speakers. Uh, it's really a bunch of talented musicians. Just a couple of minutes into it, the, the bassist was doing something. So fast, I don't even know. Yeah, that's one thing. That bass player is really good. Man. He's a very good bass player. To be able to do something that quick and stay in time on the bass, that's a challenge. It's all the time. Uh, the, the fast beats and the guitar parts kind of reminded me of old Avenged Sevenfold, but with like Bad Religion-esque vocal style. It's kind of cool. As far as the 18-minute thing, I thought the changes were, were nice. They were interesting at first, but after about 10 minutes, I just felt like I was playing that punk matic Flash game from Armor <laughs> Games <laughs> from like 20 years ago, where it was so fun because you didn't know how to play guitar, but it sounded like you did. It just, the changes got to be, uh, like Ben said, I could have I would have been happier if it was a couple of tracks instead of one 18 minute political it, adventure. It got old after 10 minutes for sure. It was like four for me. That's the only song I didn't see once. It's, it's such a commitment, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, it definitely was. About like the third time they were talking shit on George Bush, I was just like, all right, I get it. I get it. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Total grade for this song is also an equal sign. Tripling out here with equal signs. Walking Away by Catch-22. This song was just fun ska. Um, I really like the muted trumpet in the beginning. I think that added a nice touch. I don't hear that as much in ska, or at least the ska that I listen to. In general, the trumpet playing was very good, I have to say. It wasn't like the top-notch crazy jazz players that you hear in like the experimental jazz groups, but I mean, it was tasty. I really liked the tone that they went for, and they showed a very good use of their range. Another part that I really liked was the really chilled out swing bridge at the at the part there with a really cool bass line walking through there. All in all, I'm not a fan of ska. I will not seek it out, but I enjoyed this. So back to like the bad mood day. That's the first thing I listened to this and don't <laughs> listen to this song if you're in a bad mood because <laughs> I was so mad, I was like, why are these guys so happy? They shouldn't be as happy because I'm not happy, and I don't like being happy when I'm trying to be mad. 
and Catch this- 22 knows nothing of life. <laughs> yeah, be real. Be real. You know nothing of the pains of the world. <laughs> Having said that, uh, I hated it my first time. I did go back and revisit it though today, and I was, you know, chilled out. It was actually a good song. It was uh, cool bass line, fun poppy guitar, fun drums. Yeah, fun, you know, just fun all around music. Uh, Scott, like I said, really isn't my thing. Uh, but this song actually, uh, I, I listened to it two times today because I, I enjoyed it that much. So enjoying a Scott song is saying a lot. Yeah, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Scott. Um, I had a lot of stuff by Real Big Fish. They've done some good covers, Kiss Me Deadly. Uh, Walking on Sunshine. Five Iron Frenzy was like a Christian band that was ska that I accidentally got into a long time ago. This was kind of like run of the mill for me. Um, it 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 was really good. I don't think I've I've heard a ska with that much of a slow kind of jam and bluesy feel, jazzy feel to it. Kind of a good change of pace. I'm sure at the time it came out, it was referred to as new ska. <laughs> I, over, overall, it was a good song. I liked it. The walking bass line, uh, as Mike said was very prominent throughout most of the song and I can just feel my wrist and my fingers burning burning with passion I don't know burning with pain burning good job yeah total grade for this song equal sign I'm actually uh, going to give this song a negative <laughs> sign because of it being ska I just do not seek out ska and I mean you don't alright hold on just because you're not actively seeking it out doesn't mean that you, like, a negative sign means, like, you're going to turn it off or, like, change the station. Oh, and if a friend was listening to it, like, you would, you wouldn't you would, say You would, yeah, you wouldn't say anything. Okay. I mean, you wouldn't necessarily turn it off if it was their radio. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind of a dick move. <laughs> That'd be a hard negative. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, overall, I'll give this song an equal sign. Uh, it's definitely not something I'm going to seek out, and if my friend had it on, I would be courteous and not turn it off. Yeah, I'd probably give this one an equal sign too. Like I said, I've, I've listened to a bunch of Scar. It's just, it's a good background sound filler. Dorian by Demons and Wizards. Uh, this had a really nice Megadeth riff that just kind of went throughout the whole song. The vocals are definitely inspired by Dio, and then some parts in the chorus, they're actually inspired by Queen when they do those harmonies. It's a nice, thick, scooped metal production that gives you a really good pounding. Ben talked to me about this, and I agree with him. The slow part was a little long. I could have used another awesome metal riff that kind of complimented the other awesome metal riff to kind of take me keep me keep the, the motion going yeah keep the motion going <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna start grading people every day with hard negatives <laughs> soft positives <laughs> some kind of dirty hard, hard, hard negative. Negative. people with hard negatives <laughs> Actually, I think a hard positive sounds the dirtiest. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Dude, I'm so hard positive. That guy's a real hard positive. Yeah, so when I saw the album cover, I wasn't really sure. It looked like one of those kind of cheesy death metal bands. But when it when it came in with that riff, that like fat guitar, like fast, like palm chugging. I, I think it might even had octaves on there. I don't remember. But just thick metal riff. I was like. Yes, this is good, especially for like my, my whole bad day scenario. Like, this is what I need. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was good. Very satisfying riff and just heavy. Um, you instantly become a badass when that riff comes <laughs> on. <laughs> you put your hood on and kind of like look down when that's. Uh, <laughs> Not like, a rapist. I mean, what? <laughs> did I give you that original impression? That's the first thing I thought. <laughs> first thing I thought when I heard this awesome metal riff was, I'm a rapist now. <laughs> no, no raping um, came to mind on this one. But it was intense and it was a good riff. Um, I, and I wanted that to carry through to, you know, kind of satisfy that just heavy chugging that they came off with. And I think that slow part fit. It might have <laughs> been able to be shortened a little bit. I think it went on for like two minutes or three minutes. Yeah, about three minutes, which is like half the song. Yeah, so I think they kind of changed the whole vibe of the song, and I wanted to stay heavy. Other than that, like, it was a great song. Someone will have to tell me, because I didn't look it up myself, but the singer for this band has got to be the singer from Blind Guardian. It's, it, they sound identical in a lot of ways, and the harmonies and everything. I love Blind Guardian, so that's a compliment. I like that we didn't discuss this ahead of time, at least I didn't, and we all had the exact same words that like in my notes it said uh, fat guitar part sounds like mega death literally that was awesome then the drums were like super intense when they came in and uh, I was impressed that when they got to the slower part 
it still say it still stayed huge. The sound was still huge throughout. I was going to say that that's that's due to the drums. They got a real big delay, real big reverb on those drums and just like fills fills the speakers, man. It's awesome. It's like a gong on top of a mountain in China. <laughs> 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 what did you say to that? <laughs> no. It's like a rocket ship to the Mars. It's gonna start saying, yes, Ryan. <laughs> You're not wrong. <laughs> well, <laughs> only because we can't prove you wrong. I kind of like the length of this low part. I'm, I'm into that. I, I'm actually a little surprised, Mike, that you were uh, um, upset that it went on so long because you were the one that... Uh, the two of us that actually liked how long Jordan and Dessa's little synth pad solos were, and I kind of get bored with those, so... Well, this I was mean, a little more interesting to me. Well, fair enough. I, I can see that. I can see that. That's a thing, too. As far as the song goes, I don't think any of us really paid attention to the lyrics at all. <laughs> if if the lyrics were involved, maybe there were... Because I can definitely tell between one, I'm assuming it's a chorus, to another chorus, the words are completely different. So that probably means that some kind of journey happened between the beginning of the song and the end of the song. Whatever was happening in the slow part was probably something of import, I would assume, since it was in the fucking song. Good job, Mike. <laughs> I applaud myself. Good job. <laughs> Overall, I thought it was a great song, um, through and through. And let me know, if that's the guy from Blind Guardian, I'm going to be pretty happy. That's his twin brother, actually. Is it really? No. Total great for this song, plus sign. Only because of that freaking killer riff. I will need that again in my life. <laughs> I want to give it an equal sign. The riff was great, but I know enough songs that follow through to the end, so I'm going to give it an equal sign. I want to give it a plus sign. Definitely going to go out, put on my leather jacket, put my hood up. <laughs> Listen to this. I'd just like to give a shout out to Justin really quick. Justin, thank you so much. This was your suggestion. Uh, Justin and I know each other in real life, and he was supporting me long before this YouTube channel was ever a thing. And he went and became a patron, like, in an instant. So, Justin, huge shout out to you, man. Thank you. I Walk Alone by Saliva. Saliva. <laughs> uh, this is, again, good old redneck metal. I'm not really a fan of the singer. He kind of sounds like a country singer making an attempt to sing like the guy from Pearl Jam. It has good production. I like the vocal melody that they chose for the chorus. But just all in all, the song was just a little too simplistic for me. I know they're trying to go for the bludgeoning, like the American version of Swedish death metal. But not literally, but you know what I mean. Like before Swedish death metal was fully embraced in America, this was like, yeah, man, he's going so hard. And you listen to the airs of the Vikings and you're like, well, no, no. <laughs> so when I saw Saliva, the only things I've ever heard of them are their two main ones, which is Ladies and Gentlemen and Click Click Boom, which were pretty satisfying back in the day. I wouldn't like say that it was just like, you know, smash hits and just, you know, blew away at the genre or anything, but they were cool songs. So I was kind of expecting that kind of feel for this song. And I can see the feel was there, but I feel like his voice sounded different, which kind of threw me off. It was, uh, it was, it seemed a little bit dirtier sounding, and not in a good way, than his <laughs> other stuff. <laughs> Just kind of more... Dirt, dirty like AIDS dirty. Yeah. Dirty, dirty saliva. AIDS. <laughs> dirty AIDS. <laughs> not what I expected, and I feel like it could have been, I know it's supposed to be like dirty, yeah, redneck rock kind of thing, but it was a little bit just too mushy for me. Guys, hold on a second. What if Click Click Boom was really the world's biggest troll? And instead of being a song about shooting a gun, it's actually a song about that sound that the drummer makes when someone cracks a joke. Click Click Boom. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? How often do jokes make bands famous too? Um, all the time. Uh, Kesha? Oh, did she just yeah. she just is a joke. Yeah, yeah well, that, that was, was like the point. She was supposed to be a joke. Oh, like, really? Yes. Yeah, I, as far as I've been told by many people. Really? Kesha was originally like kind of like a making fun of people artist, and it just got popular. If I'm wrong, correct really? me. But is yeah, that's wrong with comment music section, today? please. I want to <laughs> I want to know if this is true or not, because that could be a music snob video in and of itself. Well, I don't know. Actually, the first thought I had when I heard it was, this is saliva? You know, it doesn't sound at all like them. Josie Scott, I think, is their singer's name. Generally, the last song that he did that I liked was the song for the Spider-Man movie with Chad Kroger, Hero. The only good song Chad Kroger's ever done. Yeah. That's a sweet song. That's a pretty decent song. Yeah, I love that song. 
So he started singing, and it sounded too much like Volbeat Singer. It was just too open-throated. I didn't think it sounded think, like Volbeat at all. No. I mean, it doesn't sound like Volbeat, I, but... I mean, I'm not a huge <clears throat> fan of Volbeat Singer. He actually makes me laugh when I hear him <laughs> sing, but, like, in a in a good way. I don't understand it. I don't know if it was if it was because the throat was so open, or... Was, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> You guys are bad. <laughs> You're bad. Uh, so it's saliva. Did I just say that? <laughs> it's a wrestler's theme song. Isn't it? It's Batista's theme song. Yeah. Yeah. So it's very, very fitting for a wrestler to walk out to. The chorus is... Yes, it is. is yeah, very generic and very heavy for being. Spe- especially when it's so on the nose of I walk alone. <laughs> <laughs> Every drum feel... Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> <laughs> I do have to give him credit for one thing because I have that awesome Beats audio on my phone. This is not an advertisement, I promise. It's the opposite of yeah. actually. <laughs> right after the chorus, there's a bass drop, and my headphone just went. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's the. <laughs> it was no bass drop. It just went. <laughs> 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 I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> Yes, Ryan. <laughs> I actually kind of like the chorus of the song, and um, yeah, the chorus made me want to punch things in a good way. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Overall, I thought it was a, a, a decent generic jam, is what I'll call it. A generic jam. Wouldn't mind hearing it again. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it sounded really confident when you said that too. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Maybe. I would listen to it again, maybe. <laughs> hey, it's Mike with Become the Night, maybe. <laughs> Total grade for this song, equal sign. Total grade for this song is a low equal sign just because this is a lot of his other stuff that I wouldn't turn off, but this song in particular, I would turn off. Then it's a negative sign if you would turn it off. <laughs> Overall, I want to rate this song a negative sign. <laughs> you didn't write these rules down, Jesus. <laughs> Don't hurt me, but I think I'm actually going to give this song a plus sign. Really? Whoa. Yeah, I just, I'm not going to hurt you. I'm I get just surprised. The, I, get in, I get in the mood for that kind of music sometimes, you know? Especially for the guy that was talking about, like, the simplistic stuff with the drums with Asking Alexandria. Like, I would pick Asking Alexandria over this band any day. Yeah, it's just because the the different style of music and you know I like hard rock so you like Kid Rock too. I don't, uh, I don't like Kid no, Rock no. at all. Okay, you don't like Kid all, Rock at all. All to the all the ang to ang. <laughs> Eternally missed by Muse. The song had a really cool intro. For me, the chorus was kind of meh. I mean, it wasn't bad by any means. It just didn't give it to me. I really, really liked his voice, but everything else behind it was just a little, fell a little flat for me. Absolutely loved the bass tone and the bass phrasing, like the notes that he picked. That's, he is one of the best parts of that band, possibly. If someone could argue the best part of that band, I wouldn't think so, but I mean, friggin' amazing. Uh, it was also a pretty interesting guitar solo too. He was kind of going for that thing where it was more just quote unquote making noise with the guitar and letting that speak kind of in a similar way like a parallel to what Steve Vai does when he does uh, melodic lines that aren't melodic almost like actually trying to speak with a moving inflection of the of the guitar I also thought the bridge was really cool um, as far as the ending goes where it just like dropped off and he's like Pig, like fake pig squealing at the end or whatever he's doing, whatever he's trying to do there. I didn't really get it, but then again, I also didn't pay attention to the lyrics, so I'm sure there's some reason why he did it. Yeah, if the one thing I can always count on for Muse is always to have a solid underlying of the song, like the, whether it's the bass or the guitar, if there's always something that just carries the song beautifully. Uh, and actually it's funny because the bass player in the band, like I've seen them like work together and Matt, the lead singer, will always give the bass player shit because like he's like, the bass player definitely gets the most shit, like the drummer will go in with the first thing and Matt's like, yeah, I love it. The bass player's like, yeah, let's work on that and they'll work on it for three days and then finally Matt will be like, okay, that's good, that's good. And so the bass player, it's funny to like watch them work together because he's always being antagonized by Matt. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know if like that's a thing with them, but like, yeah, they, they definitely get onto each other all the time. It's kind of fun to watch. But no, the bass player is, is great. Uh, and I love that guitar tone he has for the verse. He's like kind of playing like, I think he's like two guitar parts. And he's kind of got that harmony going. The tone on the guitar is always great with Matt. Um, the solo was really cool, I thought. Uh, he's got really unique melodic phrasing, and then he's playing that like 
I guess it was backwards. I think they they played that solo backwards. They recorded it forwards probably, and then they played it backwards with like a bunch of cool effects. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Didn't pick up on that. Yeah, it's kind of like doing that triplet just notes, like <laughs> kind of like just running through the scale. But then he played it backwards. It had like a cool sound to it. I mean, I, I enjoy a lot of these a lot. But um, no, actually, I listened to the song like seven or eight times. I you can't and, believe I haven't heard the song. You before. and Omar will get along great then. Sweet. Omar um, is all about Muse. Omar is the one that requested this one and the next suggestion. <laughs> yeah, Omar and I are buds. Muse is one of my all-time <laughs> favorite bands. They don't get old. I've never heard the song before, which is yeah. shocking. I'll get you guys to send selfies to each other. Yeah, great song, great choice. I'm glad I got the suggestion. I really liked how, how the bass and the drums came in very deliberately, and uh, then the song just started flowing from there. Um, the lyrics were kind of creepy. Uh, as always, killer vocal work, cool keyboards. Um, the Latin beat in the middle, the samba beat, is actually the basically the first samba beat I ever learned how to play. I was like, yeah, actually, that's kind of cool. I was feeling that. My old chorus teacher was a fantastic percussionist, Mr. V, if you're ever watching this. Props to you, man. You're the reason I'm still doing it. Um, He's not watching. Cool little samba part, and then right back at it. And uh, the outro where he was kind of, kind of chanting a little bit. It was almost like I think I think right before there was like a little toy box kind of sounding thing. Yeah, I really bells. like that toy box. And thing. It, it was almost like a music box and a kid having a nightmare or something. Or like I think I said that about another song previously, but it had kind of the same feel to me. Sabotage. Sabot. That's what it was. <laughs> I thought it was kind of creepy. It actually kind of scared me a little bit. I think I'll put that in headphones and listen to it at night when I fall asleep. Total grade for this song, equal sign. Total grade for this song is many, many plus signs. Okay. Can you give it a number? Uh, let's say 10, which I think is the highest Jesus one. Jesus Christ. Scale. Yeah, 10 plus, well, we were, I kind of like signs? on a one to 10 scale. One, one plus sign means a lot. You're really well, devaluing dude, yeah, these plus signs. I've been saying like eight plus signs and seven plus signs. So 10 plus signs is like a 10 out of 10. Like there was nothing wrong with the song. I loved it, and 10 I really out of 10. listened to it. Actively. Perfect masterpiece. Nine point five. Nine point five. <laughs> You're gonna have to give my grading a plus, negative, or equal sign. Jeez. Are those ten soft or hard plus signs? <laughs> I don't even know. I won't understand what he means. Five, five soft plus signs. <laughs> six regular plus signs. I would definitely give the song a plus sign. I'll be listening to this again. Futurism by Muse. The song was kind of like a reskin of the song Hysteria. The intro bass line was very similar to Hysteria. The vocal rhythms were also very similar. Now, the note selection was different and the guitar and the drums were definitely different. But overall, the the driving melody and the bass line, that, that characteristic bass line were really, really similar. Now, I'm not saying this is a negative thing, because I friggin' love the song Hysteria. I also know there's only so many things a band can do and still sound like their band. Uh, the thing that really pulled me into this song and sold it to me was his vocal range. It was off the wall. Really, really good. I, I mean, I've heard him hit really, really, really high notes, but I've never heard him put that much energy and that much um, that much emotion into how he was singing the notes. It was, wow, blew me away, actually. He definitely pushed it to the next level. Yeah, I, I like this song not as much as the last one. I feel like this was more just kind of like the, the run-of-the-mill muse, which is still incredible, ironically. Uh, it wasn't... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're just that good. Um, there was nothing special about this song. After hearing Matt like blow just through any note that comes his way, uh, that I guess I didn't even notice the vocal range on this song. He has an amazing voice and he carries that through every single song. Songwriting was great. Um, it just was another song on the on the record for me. And if I may, yeah, I kind of felt that way about Eternally Missed and Futurism. No, like Futurism because of how much he pushed the vocals really was the thing that sold me. When I first listened to it, I was like. Eh, it's it's Muse, it's great, you know, but it's just like, eh, I've heard Muse before. But then the more I listened to it, I was like, but this is the, the particular thing that I really enjoyed about it that separated it. And that obviously Ben felt that way about the other song, so just to draw up differences of opinion. And that's probably what, I mean, Muse is really good at, just 
recognizing he's not singing to one fan, he's you know singing to the entire demographic, which is shows talented artists is when they can still sound like them but appeal to you know different audiences. Song gave me a hard positive. <laughs> not a chicken tender. Hmm? Yes, Ryan. Last yes, time. Ryan. <laughs> you were so good last time with all of these like science puns and dad jokes. <laughs> It's food okay. jokes today. Now it's just like, uh, what happened? It's, yeah. No more caffeine for you. <laughs> it makes sense in my head. <laughs> <laughs> Aliens. Yes, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Kristen, is this what you put up with? I, I understand now. <laughs> I'm gonna cry again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's been a day for words. Uh, I, this is more of a jammy song for Muse than, than I'm used to. Just like a straight up, kind of sitting in the garage jamming with your buds <laughs> kind of feel. For the intro to the chorus kind of had the same rhythm as the Saliva song, but way more interesting. Really? Like, da, da, same da, rhythm? Yeah. Da, 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 I, didn't, kinda, I didn't notice. Yeah, I'll, I'll have to listen back to that. Yeah. It, it was and it's way more interesting, obviously, though, because the drums aren't just going da 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 da. Oh, yeah, that was a cool song. Uh, definitely, with with the vocal work, um, you, you can you notice how easily he slips into that falsetto and just adds an octave or two, Ugh. which is is nuts. And that's why I so like butter. He does it like butter too. Just slides just, it right in. Just slides that hard positive right in. <laughs> One big chicken tender for me. God damn! Why the chicken tender? <laughs> you just desexualized nope. the shit. Nope. Not only did you desex it, it's like you desexualized it and then made it nonsense. <laughs> it's a gift. After the second chorus, when he really started hammering up on those falsettos and it started jamming, it <clears throat> it really. I, I don't know why, but the song sounded like Aliens to me. It just felt like Aliens. I don't know what the, okay. if they were shooting for that. <laughs> okay. But that's why I said hey, there was a reason. The guitar solo had like a tremolo picking, which is real cool. He just threw, throws it in there, and the, there was sort of a key change somewhere in the between the bridge or the end of the song. Somewhere it was kind of more of a major key. Um, the guitar solo came in around there. I, anyway, you don't notice it, and then. You realize it happened. Uh, everything was so smooth. One thing to the next, unlike everything I just said. <laughs> <laughs> Total grade for this song, positive. A fucking positive. God damn it, man. <laughs> Total grade for this song, plus sign. I would absolute. I'm going to go back and listen to this because of his voice. I want to give this uh, an equal sign. It was not my favorite Muse song, but I still enjoy the song. I just have so many other great Muse options. I'm gonna give this song a plus sign because Aliens. And now for our suggestions. My suggestion this week, especially for those of you who think you do not like rap, is Coins by Wax and EOM. I showed this to Ryan the other day and he still doesn't like it, but that's be just because he doesn't realize he actually does like it. Wax is actually, I would classify him more as a hip hop artist than as a rap artist. He doesn't do the gang banging gangster crap. He doesn't do trap rap. He has excellent beats which is what draws me in in the first place i love his beats for, for the most part and his lyrical stylings are absolutely fantastic for a guy who doesn't listen to words i have to say his words are amazing but then on top of that for the longest time i didn't listen to his words and was still like wow this guy's flow is on point Seriously, in my opinion, one of the best rappers going today. I mean, granted, I don't really listen to that much rap, but would put him up against just about anyone, in my opinion. My suggestion for you this week is Never Heard Nothing by Galapagos. Uh, it's a super, when I first heard it, I thought like, man, this song's gotta be a hit. Um, but it's actually, I think it has like 100,000 listens or something like that on Spotify. It's not really that popular of a song, but it's phenomenal. It's, it's got like, a, most songs are four, measures for like there's typically go around like four you know measures um and it like kind of repeats itself typically speaking this one actually has like a five bar progression which is cool because it kind of feels like it's going to end but then it goes one more and that's it gives a really cool feel really sad song really heartfelt um kind of folk vibe check it out my suggestion for you is astoria by mariana trench it's a whole there's a whole album named astoria the first track is like an <laughs> overture uh, called Astoria. Definitely check that track out. It's mostly a pop, 80s kind of pop album. 
Uh, you can hear the influences. And then the last track on the album is just as epic, but check out Astoria. First track on the album Astoria by Mary Ann Trench. Won't be upset. All right, guys, that is it for Song Suggestion Friday this week. Now, I'm sorry we had to keep it short. We've been running stupidly long on our Song Suggestion Fridays lately, which apparently, from the looks of it, this might be a two-parter. Ben actually had an excellent idea of doing the first five songs in this format and then another ten in a podcast format, which is something that we were throwing around. And if you do pledge five, at least $5 a month on Patreon, you get access to the extended podcast. Let me know what you guys think about that idea in the comments below. Also, let us know what you thought about our thoughts. Let, you, let us know if you have more suggestions. And let us know what you think of our suggestions. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video. Rock on!